Many compounds have several acidic protons, so-called polyprotic acids. Here's some examples. Carbonic acid, H2CO3, two acidic protons. Phosphoric acid, three acidic protons. Sulfuric acid, two acidic protons. The titration curve of polyprotic acids look stepwise. The protons are titrated individually. Usually, in a polyprotic system, the pKa of the first proton is significantly different than the pKa of the second proton. Now, I'm using pKa's to describe protons, which is Karman parlance. We know, of course, that the pKa's refer to k's, which are equilibrium constants. But I talk about the pKa of the first proton as a property of the first proton. It's the pH at which that proton is removed from the molecule in a titration. Let's look at that. So here's the titration curve of a polyprotic acid. I can tell it's polyprotic because there's two equivalence points. So let's say this is the titration curve for carbonic acid, and I could sketch it out because I know the titration curves always go through the pKa equal pH at halfway through the equivalence point. So I always get a point in the titration curve for free where the pH is equal to the pKa at halfway to the equivalence point. In this case, it's halfway to the first equivalence point, the first proton coming off. So I can look at this and I say, well, below the first pKa, the acid form predominates. Above the first pKa, the base form predominates. So at the equivalence point, half equivalence point, I have an equal mixture of the acid and base form. So let's go along the titration curve. Mostly acid form to start. As I get to half equivalence, equal concentration of the acid and base. As I go beyond that, the base form starts to predominate. And when I get to the first equivalence point, I'm all the base form. But now I can start another titration of this proton. This proton has a higher pKa, so now I'm going to go through a second point where the pH is equal to the pKa, halfway to the second equivalence point. So let's look at the species that are available. So right here at the equivalence point, I had all HCO3 minus, and then HCO3 minus starts to act like an acid, and its proton is titrated. So as I go along the titration curve, the predominant form is the acid form. I'm below the second pKa. As I get to the second pKa, equal amounts of the acid and base form. And as I pass through the second pKa, the base form predominates, CO3 minus 2. So that's how I sketch out the titration curve of polyprotic acids and Polyprotic acids can act as buffers in several regions. They have two distinct pKa's, or if it's triprotic, three distinct pKa's. Let's look at a polyprotic acid, carbonic acid, buffering your blood. Now, your blood is buffered with carbonic acid, but only the first pKa, that is the buffer around the first pKa, is used. And that first pKa is around six. So how is it done? Well, carbon dioxide is produced in your cells by metabolism and then exhaled through your lungs. And if you're breathing normally, the steady state partial pressure of carbon dioxide in your lungs as it's being removed from your body is around 40 torr. That corresponds by Henry's law to a dissolved concentration of around 1.2 millimolar. Now that's maintained as mainly carbonic acid by an enzyme in your blood called carbonic anhydrase. So the system that maintains the acid form of the weak acid, weak base system that buffers your blood is your lungs and carbonic anhydrase. Now the base form, HCO3 minus, is maintained at about 24 millimolar by your kidneys. Your kidneys filter your blood and they have the remarkable property of being able to remove selectively specific ions. So they can maintain the H3O minus concentration at 24 millimolar. So what does that mean for the pH of your blood? Well, you can use and apply your 
Henderson-Hasselbach expression. The pH is the pKa plus log of the base form over the acid form. And in this case, the pKa of carbonic acid in blood is around 6.1. The acid and base form, we've seen the base form maintained by your kidneys at about 24 millimolar. The acid form maintained by Henry's Law and your lungs and carbonic anhydrase at about 1.2 millimolar. So if you solve, you get a pH of around 7.4. So pH is maintained in your blood by a buffer system, and it's maintained around pH 7.4, and that turns out to be vitally important. If your pH changes by just half a unit in either direction, it's essentially fatal. And it's fatal because you change the protonation states. Remember, the pH determines which forms are present in solution, the acid or the base form. If you arbitrarily change that, that changes the potential difference and the selectivity of the membranes in your system, in your body. It changes the structure of the proteins in your body. So very dramatic changes can occur by just a small change in pH. So it's vital to buffer your blood and resist changes in pH. Now, you can understand if you breathe rapidly, <laughs> you can go to a situation where you're reducing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. If you reduce the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in your lungs, your blood will become slightly alkaline. You're reducing the acid form. So if your blood becomes slightly alkaline by hyperventilating, that can be dangerous. But you know how to cure that. If you find someone that's hyperventilating, what do you do? Well, you have them breathe into a bag. And you breathe into a bag because you breathe back in that carbon dioxide and restore this 40 tor equilibrium in your blood and restore the pH in your blood and maintain that buffer at about 7.4. pH buffering in your blood.